I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas. I'm an orbital and oculoplastic surgeon here in Los Angeles and Beverly Hills. And it's my pleasure in another uh, segment of our series to be talking to Dr. Babak Larian, who is a thyroid and parathyroid surgeon here in Los Angeles and Beverly Hills. Thank you. Uh, well, with my patients often with Graves' disease ask questions continually about thyroid hormone replacement. And I think this is a really difficult subject because many patients are on Synthroid for a period of time. Many patients, even before that, are on um, you know, hormone blockers such as methimazole and tapazole. But the, often the questions arise with thyroid hormone replacement, whether that be after radioactive iodine right. or treatment or whether that be after surgical treatment of the thyroid. But they're trying to replace the natural thyroid hormone. And there are synthetic versions and then there are non-synthetic versions. Right. And I think this is very confusing, especially because there's so much information on the internet about brain fog and about how it, you can have a natural solution or a synthetic right. solution. Can you comment a little bit about all these different hormone preparations and what people should be asking their physicians? Absolutely. So the thyroid produces the hormone uh, T4, and T4 gets transformed into T3, which is the active form, right? And so when you use thyroid hormone replacement, generally most patients go on Synthroid, which is T4, a synthetic T4. And T4 in the body is converted to T3 to do its work, its final work. But some patients' ability to transform T4 to T3 is not as well as others, right? And so if they don't have as much T3 coursing through their body, they may not feel as invigorated or energetic. And so they're the patients who generally have brain fog. And so generally the patients are started on Synthroid. And once, once over time it's established that this is appropriate and the patients are not having symptoms and are controlled well, that should be more than adequate. If not, then you have to use either a combination of synthetics, which is a T4 Synthroid, with cytomel, which is CT3, and try to figure out what adjustment of that is appropriate, what dose on each, or the alternative is to take the natural hormone substitutes. And by that I mean these are, are taken from pig thyroids that are dried up and made into pill form. And this has both T4 and T3 within it, right? In a natural combination, you could say, you know, in a natural proportion. And so, but some of the patients really do better on this combination of pills. Not only because it's natural, but it mostly because it has the appropriate proportion of T4 and T3. And so when they do that substitute, it replaces the shortcomings they may have in their body in terms of T3 production. Yeah, I know some patients really enjoy the T3. I guess the pig version, which is armor, mm -hmm. um, has a bit more T3 than humans normally have right. um, in it. What kind of special blood tests or how do you follow these patients? Do they have to undergo a lot of testing all the time to determine their hormone levels if they get started on this combination? Uh, you know, initially at first, yes. You know, you, the patients, you have to talk to them about their symptoms to figure out what, what symptomatology they have if they feel like they're getting too much hormone or too little and the symptoms can be very different. And also you do blood tests. You know, you check TSH which is the hormone going from the brain to the thyroid glands, instructing you to produce hormone. That really is the best reflection of what your body's hormonal status is, okay. because your brain is controlling everything and measuring everything, and it gives you a reflection of that. And then you have to check free T3 and free T4. And that relationship between the play between TSH, free T3, and T4 will tell you how to adjust the dosing of your medications. Great. And just one final question. Do you find that food or pa what patients eat or how much they exercise can affect their hormone level or their need for different supplementations? Um, absolutely. You know, our, our body is designed for utility, evolutionarily speaking. We're designed for use, you know, and as we age, we, every, every organ system that's not being utilized perfectly will st get older faster in a sense. And so when you have a combination of a disease like this that can affect every organ in your body, if you do exercise, that really tells every system to work better in harmony with each other. So I really tell my thyroid patients, specifically the Graves patients, that they really have to continue to do exercise and keep their body in ideal condition so that every part works better with each other. You know? Having said that, if you're an active person, you're going to need more thyroid hormone replacement. 
right? If you have a job where you're sitting in the front of the computer and not moving so much, then your thyroid hormone needs will be different than someone who's active all day, you know, an athlete or someone, to, uh, you know, of, of that caliber type of, or type of work. And so the adjustments can be made also based on the quality of work and the type of work that you do, you know. And now foods are very important. And again, it's all evolutionarily based. Uh, foods that were naturally available to us in, in the olden times are work in more harmony with our system, you know. So uh, fruits and vegetables and nuts and things like that are easier on the system to control and create that balance and harmony. Right. Well, a lot of patients ask me if they have to deal with thyroid fog for the rest of their life, and you know, and and, and thyroid function is so important to their life. But I, fortunately for me, I get to work with great endocrine surgeons and endocrinologists who can adjust this. Um, level and not just being within the normal range because many people are within the normal range but still just don't feel optimal or healthy and so it's great it, when you have um, a physician who actually listens to your symptoms and can work with you around those. I think it's key. I think you're having a good relationship with your endocrinologist who's going to in the long term follow your hormone levels. It's really important and so I really encourage you to find an endocrinologist that you can communicate with effectively that you feel easy to talk to because then they can understand you, they can see what's going on with you and make adjustments for you. You know, as doctors, we, we try to be the best doctor to every patient, but we're not ideal in terms of how we communicate with every, every patient. And I think that relationship is very sacred. Right. Well, for more information, you can look at uh, our Facebook or website or YouTube pages for more videos and information about these subjects. Thanks so much. Thank you.